Okay, everybody, I've got top of the hour. Um, welcome to our seventh virtual Thursday training with emergency reporting uh, of 2017. Today's topic is going to be about our new app, Inspector. Uh, if anyone cannot hear or see my screen, just send a message over and uh, we'll see if we can correct that. But as of now, you should be able to hear me okay and see our first slide of the presentation. Okay, I'll be your presenter today. Um, my name's Tom Lewis. I know many of you have been on uh, previous Virtual Thursday training events, so it's good to see a lot of familiar names. Um, this may be a, we may break a record today as far as registrants for our Virtual Thursday. We had nearly 80 registrants and people are coming in as we speak, so we're, we're almost at 50 participants today. So I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to, uh, to join in on today's training. Along with me today is the product owner of uh, Inspector. Uh, Inspect ER, I got to get that right. Inspect ER, and it's Stuart Smith. Um, Stuart, if you want to unmute and just kind of do a quick introduction, uh, we're glad to have you as my wingman today. Sure, I just uh, want to say hello to everybody. You can see uh, some of my experience there. I'm a retired firefighter paramedic. Uh, I was 11 years in operations and about 10 years in administration uh, back in the old days. Uh, so I'm glad to be here at ERS and uh, be able to give you some guys some good functionality with a new app. Excellent. Thanks, Stuart. I'm glad you're here with us to answer questions. And uh, both of us will be answering questions throughout the presentation. Uh, some of it, I'll verbalize a lot of them so everybody has the benefit of hearing them. And then, of course, as uh, those of you who have participated before, you have your questions panel. Just type in as you would a chat message. And between Stuart and I, we will be able to answer those questions for you throughout the session. Okay, just some announcements here as we get started. Our Regional Training Academy, we're going to be calling them. This one's still called the conference. Um, from May 9th through 11th in San Diego has been sold out. However, um, we do have a couple other upcoming events. I'm going to put that in the chat window to you guys right now. You can click into Eventbrite and see that we've got one on July 25th through the 27th in Cleveland, Ohio. And we've got, well... We've got one in Miami, Florida. That'll be our quarter four, October 24th through the 26th. And that link I presented to you will uh, take you to all of the information about the events as well as the ability to register for them. And we just announced Cleveland yesterday and we're already getting uh, people signing up for it. So very exciting. And our first one this year was in Austin and it was a tremendous success. So um, if any of you were uh, in attendance at the Austin uh, Regional Training Academy. If you want to send out a little message and pe if people want to contact you to see how your experience was, just send out a, a like you would a question and uh, and uh, we'll be able to connect them to you and you can uh, tell them how, how your experience was in Austin. Okay, I um, just wanted to, I mentioned this last uh, couple weeks ago, but North Myrtle Beach Fire Rescue, their local news station, WBTW, in uh, in the uh, state of South Carolina, they uh, did a nice story about how the department was replacing their decade-old reporting software. And so I'm going to put that link in there here momentarily. If you get a chance to watch it, it's a you know two or three-minute news story, but it's really cool and it highlights how the department uh, is changing over to emergency reporting. Uh, we also have a brand new blog post about emergency reporting and education. Um, I'll get that link over to you guys here in just a second. In fact, let me get those now. And that way you can click into them as you see uh, as you see fit. Here we go and the latest blog post. And so this high school in Indiana, and there's also one in Pittsburgh Public Schools. They're doing the same thing. They're using our software to train the next generation of fire and EMS professionals. And so these students, they essentially uh, do mock incidents. They also respond on campus to incidents as well um, as first as a first response team. And they document uh, their incidents within our system. And they also manage a mock fire department or a mock EMS agency using emergency reporting. And that's been really successful in, in both of those areas. So check it out. Learn more at Central 9 uh, Fire and EMS High School in, well, Central High, Central um, 9 High School. And then it's their uh, Fire and EMS program within the, uh, the high school there. So very cool stuff. Okay, so here's our objective today, the new Inspect ER app. So what it is, where to get it, what access levels are available, how much, how much it is, 
how to configure. Uh, one of the levels requires configuration within our administration module. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, of course, logging into the app, synchronizing your data, the main grid once you're, once you're in the app. And then once you're in the app itself within a single occupancy, um, it's laid out a little bit differently than our web-based um, app or web-based product, um, but the data is all there. And so there's a couple of changes I want to show you. Um, the layout, of course, is a little different, and we think it's a little more intuitive both for inspectors and for operations personnel. And there's a few fields that are named a little differently, but they sync up to the to a same data within the system. So the field names may be slightly changed, but the data won't change. We're going to um, show how to conduct an inspection and uh, the ability to both view results, this typo there, sorry, and to email results as well. And this, this app does allow for signature capture and it will work on or offline. And so I'll sh I won't be able to show you the offline, otherwise you wouldn't see my screen, but uh, you'll have to take my word and give it a try and uh, see how well it works offline. It's seamless. So that's what the app's all about. Um, it's for inspectors, fire marshals, and operations. Your ability to access occupancy, structure information 24 seven, whether you're online or, off, or not. Photos for each inspection observation, just like in our system. And conduct uh, custom inspections, again, just like our system, except it gives you the ability to do it offline. And then you can synchronize your data very, very quickly, um, really minutes versus days. And I'll actually show you that in, in, uh, once we log into the app. It is downloadable now uh, in all of the major um, app stores, Google Play, the Apple App Store, and the Windows Store. It's important to know that the app has been designed for tablets. So if you're on an iPhone, it won't even appear in the App Store. Now, if you're on a, an Android phone, or I believe even a Windows phone, it may appear in the App Store, but just know it has been tablet optimized. There's just so much an inspector has to manage. Um, we made the decision to focus on development for tablets. So just to, just so you know, um, in case you're on your iPhone and go, I can't, it's not, I don't have it here. And it's also important to know that we have an old app called Occupancy. Okay, that's in the Apple App Store. That's the old app. It really will only work on very archaic versions of iOS. Um, back in iOS 6, I believe it will work. Um, so most of us don't have that anymore. Some do, and, and certainly that, that app will, uh, would work. But you want to look for Inspect ER, not the old occupancy app. And we are working towards uh, actually taking that off the store at some point. But uh, when you do a search for emergency reporting, you will see two apps. The one you want to look for is in, uh, look for that logo, the Inspect ER. So there are three levels of functionality in the app. Um, and this is done, and I'm going to show you pricing um, as well, and we'll talk a little bit more about it as we go through these different levels, but it's important you understand, one, what each level does, and the combinations you can purchase these levels in, okay? So level one provides you read-only access to all valid users. So in other words, if you're a valid user um, and active in the system, you know, set to active in the system, you're able to log in to the app, and read your occupancy data. Um, no inspections are included with level one. And that is, that is sold per agency. Level two allows you to read and edit, again, all valid users for the occupancy info, um, but level two still does not grant inspection capabilities. This is sold on a per station basis. Level three, the highest level, uh, based on the number of licenses purchased will determine the number of users that can go and can view and complete inspections. Okay, it can be paired with level one or level two, but it can also be independent of level one and level two. So the configurations for purchasing can be like this, level one only, level two only, level three only, okay, or, and I think this is what most agencies are going to choose, Level one and level three combined, level two and level three combined. Let me just check and see if we've got any questions so far. Okay, so far so good, great. Okay, so here's the pricing. Level one is $120 per year, and that's agency-wide. 
Remember, that's the read-only capabilities for all users, all active users in the account. Level two is 240 per year per station. And level three is $480 per year per login. And, you, and it's basically per license. So if you were to purchase five licenses, you get to manage which users have access um, to, the, to the app's level three capabilities. And I'll show you that a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna get rolling here with the app. And one thing that you need to know is that the app itself, you can download right now. There's no cost for the app itself, but it, can, it won't function without um, one of those levels enabled or purchased for your account. All right, let's do this. Okay, so what we want to go over first is setting it up within your account. So the only time that you need to actually go in to your administrative settings to work on the uh, work on the app and to do anything within the web-based system is here if you purchase the level three configuration. So here in admin, and so I'll show you how this works. Um, on the far right panel, and this is of course for administrators only, on the far right panel, you've got applications. And so this app is for inspector, inspect ER licenses. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this grid. This looks very similar to when you add and remove people from apparatus in the incidents module, as well as when you're adding and removing people when you're sending messages in the message center, except this is where you assign login privileges to the app for conducting an inspection. So this particular account has 25 licenses. Over here on the right, I've got 25 out of 25 in use. And those 25 people that are assigned to the level three capabilities are in this list on the top. So if any one of these people were to log into the app, they would have the ability to conduct inspections. If my agency also purchased level one or level two, everybody in the account that's an active user can log into the app and view for level one or view and edit for level two. There's no need to configure it because it applies to everybody within the agency. This is just for level three privileges. The bottom here is a list of all your active users and simply click plus to add them to the list above. And if you need to change assignments or change users for the level three, it's just a matter of clicking the minus orange minus on the right. It brings them down to the main list and then you can bring up somebody by clicking plus. It'll bring them up to the top list. And those are the people that can log in to level three. Any questions on that? Okay, I know there might be a question, um, and I didn't mention this earlier, but I do want to show you the system requirements. All right, and I'm going to put this document in the handouts for everybody. And so for iOS, you've got your minimum requirements and recommended. Android, minimum and recommended. So iOS 7.1 or higher is required. Android um, 4.4 KitKat or higher is required. And then Windows 10 um, with this version, uh, 10 240 or higher is required. And then some of the other elements such as the architecture, um, touch capabilities, camera, memory, keyboard, mouse, notes, and connectivity. And of course for the keyboard for tablets, um, are not specified, of course, for uh, unless it's an integrated keyboard. You know, one of the Bluetooth keyboards. Okay, so let me put that into the handouts, and that way, as you're deciding what device to use this on, this can be your guide. So let me get that in there for you. And you should have that there. It's loaded. Okay. Any questions so far? Any questions on the system requirements? Any questions on what you need to do if you're purchase level three for inspections and how to configure? Outstanding, okay. All right, let's, now let's get into the app itself.
All right, can everybody see that? If you can't, let me know. Get as full as I can. Perfect, okay. All right, so I'm on, uh, I am currently using the iOS um, on an iPad. And so you'll notice that some of the, some of the uh, controls and characteristics that are unique to each operating system will apply. So when you're on an Android or when you're on a Windows machine, it's gonna look a little bit different on some of the things we're doing, but overall the functionality is the same. So once I put in my username and password, I click off or tap authorize, I'll probably say click half the time here, but I do mean, uh, I do mean uh, authorize. And so I have already synchronized this once, all right? That's the longest sync you're going to encounter. And I have like almost 2,000 occupancies, and it took just a few minutes. Um, now, on subsequent syncs, it just took a few seconds. All right, so it's that very first sync that you just need to be patient on. And if you have previously installed a, an earlier version of the app and are either one having uh, login difficulties where it says um, you put in the right username and password and it, it says invalid username and password, unable to log in, or you have where the sync hangs and just keeps spinning, rem delete the app, reinstall it, and you should be good to go. Every time we've, we've run into this on the, these initial releases, this initial release, it's worked fine for everybody. So just want to make you clear that in case you get stuck, we had a couple customers where that, they got stuck and as soon as they reinstalled it, they were good to go. I think we got a question. Let me give me just one second to see if I can answer that. Okay, so where do I get the handouts? Okay, Tim, you found it, great. Perfect. Okay, so you can see right now on the app, I've got 1,889 occupancies on a subsequent synchronization that took just a few seconds. It tells me my storage device um, capability as I have 12 gigs available, and then I can retrieve all basic info, contacts, and hazmat information for all 1,889 occupancies while offline, okay? So what that means is what just synchronized was just the data for those buildings, okay? Not all the files, because that would just, for some agencies, it would fill up your, well, probably just even a, like a hundred of those occupancies could potentially fill up your entire device because some agencies really make great use of the files tab and they load a lot of images there. So the images, those files tabs, those aren't there um, for right now. And then the uh, all of the inspection data is not there, but everything else is there that you would see in our system. And I'll I'll go between this and our system as I show you some of the differences. Um, one occupancy is assigned to me, and so any for inspectors out there, any occupancies that are assigned to you will automatically download the inspection history as well. All right, only ones that are assigned to you. But I'm going to show you a way that if you need to get that information there's an easy way to do it within the app, okay? And it kind of says that right there. If you need to use the inspection data while being offline, you will need to select it on the main grid by checking the box on the left of the occupancy, okay? Now, that is if you're not assigned to the occupancy. Um, but if you're assigned to the occupancy, that data will come over on the initial synchronization. And Stuart, correct me if I'm off on that, but is that right? That is correct. Excellent. And if you choose to not see this initial uh, window, you can tap that and it, it won't show it again. But I want to keep it for a future demo, so we're going to keep that on there. And so now we're on the main grid. So we've got limited real estate here compared to the web. So I want to show you the web version. And so you can get a lay of the land on the differences. And I'm on Safari, and this is a known issue where it hangs when I try and click save or cancel. I just refresh the page and any changes I make will work, have always work, have always taken. It just doesn't close that window for some reason. But here in occupancy, so we'll do a best side-by-side -side comparison. So we've got more screen real estate to work with. So there are more, there are more columns here, okay? So what we chose in the development of this was to focus on the most important columns that allows you to quickly find the occupancies you need to work with. So here we've got name, ID, and address as independent searchable columns. In the app, okay, so I'm down here in the web, web, uh, web occupancy module. In the app, 
I have name, address, and it's implied here, it's not listed, but ID is also searchable here. And instead of the string of characters in the app, it's a starts with search. So if I want to look for the Archer Ale House, I just type in those characters and my grid auto filters. That is an enhancement over the web base because you know in the web base, if I want to do Archer Ale House and I don't hit enter, it just hangs there. But once I tap enter, it appears. Okay, and the difference in the character search is um, this is looking for the string of characters anywhere within the name of the building. This is looking for where it starts with A-R-C-H. So if I had another building that started with that or it were, was on a street named Archer, for example, those results would appear in my uh, filtered list on the app. So just some subtle differences. And we will definitely look forward to your feedback on this too, because we, th we feel some of the things in the, uh, in the app will help us enhance the occupancy module itself. Okay. All right. So the next inspection ID directly correlates to next inspection date over here. Next, not ID, next inspection date. I saw IND there. <laughs> so next inspection date correlates to this here. And, the, and one of the differences is that, let me go over here. Is that I can only search high and low in this one. This one, the filter here in the in the app, allows me a time frame, and so you can't see that. So hang on one second. Okay, so here, and again, just know that it's going to be platform and operating system dependent on how this appears, but the essential functionality will be the same. So I want to see anything that's overdue today, tomorrow, next seven days, 15, 30, 60, or something that's not scheduled. Okay, and once I select it, I just click select, but I'm going to keep the filter clear, and it will refilter my, my grid here. Inspectors. Okay, again, a contrast here. Web versus app. In the inspector filter, I can select a single inspector to filter my grid to show all buildings assigned to a single inspector. Here, I can actually pick multiple. Okay, and if you saw me, you would laugh because I just used my mouse to click on this app when I need to be tapping on the actual device. So here, I select that and I can, I can pick any of the inspectors that um, are on my list of uh, assigned buildings and it will refilter. And I can filter by more than one column here. Okay. Zone. Again, an enhancement to the app here on the on the web base, single zone only. And the app, multi multiple zones. So these are what you would call in our in our web based system multi pickers. And so it's great because I can now not be limited to just one. If I'm an, on an engine company and I'm responsible for multiple areas, I can filter that grid right off the right out of the gate and just see the ones I'm responsible for. So we're going to uncheck some of these. So I don't want to change my filter or my um, and clear filter over here. And that is the lay of the land for the four columns that appear on the main grid within the app and your ability to filter and find occupancies based on those four filters. Scott, great question. What is the vision tab on your ER, ERS occupancy web screen? Ah, that will be a topic for another webinar, but the vision, good eye, good catch, Scott. This is for community risk reduction and basically getting a risk management plan and a risk assessment of your buildings. It uses the OVAP scoring system, the Occupancy Vulnerability Assessment Profile per, per building, and it allows you to um, basically assign a score based on your assessment of the building. And higher the number, the greater the risk to the community and to firefighters. The lower the number, the lower the risk. So we do have a webinar on that. Um, if you do a search from support and go to the um, knowledge base and do a quick search for a vision and or I think vision is what you want to do. Vision or go to the webinar archives and there's a, there we did do a webinar on vision. Um, and that actually brings up a good point. Um, as you guys have probably known from attending some of these virtual Thursdays, oh, you're welcome, Scott. Great. Um, uh, and so as you've attended some of these virtual Thursdays, um, you probably learned a little bit about how software is developed. And it's hard. It's, it's a hard world for me coming from the fire service because I'm used to like 
take care of the patient, put the fire out, and you're done. Well, software is never done. Um, it's we do the we use the agile software process. I mean, it is a pretty it's a pretty amazing process. Um, it allows us to prioritize and develop things based on business needs, based on customer needs, and things get developed incrementally, essentially every two weeks. And the only reason I'm mentioning that is be, is that I know you will see some things in the app. You say, man, it's not we don't have it's, not, it's in the web base, but not in the app. Um, Stuart, myself, and our team um, had to make decisions, um, and we had to get out something that's going to work and work great. And then as we move forward, you give us feedback, and then we add those features. And one of those, as Scott saw here in the in the in the occupancy module, is vision. Vision is not currently part of the um, of the app, but we know how important it is to so many of you. So it would not so it's not going to surprise me in the least if this comes comes out in the very near future. Um, no promises on dates or when, because you know with software it's you know there's different always competing priorities. But uh, I did want to mention that as you look at this, you'll notice some things that the app does enhance, like our filters, better than the web based, and then the web base has some things currently that the app will have to catch up to. But bottom line is, is if we waited till the app could do every single thing that the the occupancy module could do, you'd still be waiting for this app. There's just too much to develop. So I just wanted to kind of make that clear as we go through this. And to answer Scott's next question, is vision an upcharge? It is. There's there's additional cost for that. And um, oh, and the one thing I didn't do because I figured I was going to get more questions on it. I will put up, and I'll probably just uh, I'll track it down and send it to you guys. And actually, we can just go there. Um, let's go there real quick. Um, if you have questions about your system, be it wanting to get the app itself, licenses, and or upgrades to things like Vision, here's what you want to do. You want to go to, let's see, contact us. These are our guys, man. These guys are fantastic. Um, check out which one is your region, okay? And I'm going to put this link. So if you need this, I'm putting this in the chat right now. And you can click to it. And all their contact information is here. Um, if this link doesn't work, just let me know. But I'm on live here um, on the web, and it should take, should take you to it. So this will identify who your rep, regional rep is. And, and you can see your state and just give them a call or an email, and they will take great care of you. In fact, I think quite a few of them are on right now joining us. So um, I know Lee's with us. I didn't even get to scroll through that list. It's so long. And, but, uh, yep, Greg Anderson's with us. So some of these questions may be answered now. Mark Holloman's with us. So this is uh, it's just great to see everybody. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful. Um, we'll jump back over to the app itself. All right, I'm going to park this over on another screen. Um, let's answer Scott's question, Scott Runyon's question. Can you create a new occupancy on the tablet, or does it have to be on the main um, database? So, yeah, that's a great question. For now, Scott, it, you still have to create a new occupancy on the web-based system. And the good news is, is that if you are connected to the Internet while using the app online, you just switch over to your browser on the app, you know, access your account, Update it, synchronize it, and it'll be on the app. Um, I know the challenge will be, of course, if you want to add an app offline, but um, right now the ability to add an, uh, an occupancy is still limited to the web-based product. Okay, so let's go into an occupancy. So all you need to do, so let me go back, because I tend to, my brain tends to fill things in and not explain them. To access an occupancy, it is as intuitive as tapping the row that the occupancy appears on. And I need to mention to you, um, as I clear, I'm gonna clear the grid for just a second, guys. These check boxes on the, on the left, and I wanna address those now before I forget. And you see, because I'm clearing it, it took a second to load my 2,000 occupancies. If you check, and I see they've, they've made this box bigger. Stuart, nice job on this. Um, these were smaller on earlier beta releases, and it was kinda of hard to get your finger to tap, on it, but now it's just awesome. Okay, so excellent. Um, any boxes you check on the far left here, all that is doing is telling the app that the next time you synchronize to pull down the inspection history. All right. Now, 
the building, the, remember the inspection, the uh, occupancies that I'm assigned to as an inspector, and that appears here. Okay, so we got to, we need to know where it's pulling from. If you are assigned to an occupancy here as an assigned inspector, okay, then it will automatically pull down that information when you log in. If you need occupancy inspection history for other buildings that you are not assigned to, simply check one or more of the boxes on the far left, synchronize, and it'll pull down that information. Okay, we tap into the occupancy. Okay, so we've got three on the bottom. Now, it's a little different in each, each version. So remember, this is for iOS, which I'm on, Android, and for Windows. So the panels I have are on the bottom here. Basic, Info, Building, Hazmat, and Inspections. And again, if you guys are okay with this, I know I'm bouncing around a little bit, but I want you to be able to see how this correlates to data in the web-based product. So let's do this. Let me see if I can get a better side-by-side. And this will re, yeah, at least a little better. Okay, so everything you see here on the basic info panel, these three sections, name and location, that's all pulling from the info tab in the main system. Another thing that I know you'll discover is the master tenant uh, functionality is going to be part of a future release of the app. Okay, so you that whatever you do here in the system will not affect in any way the master tenant. But if you wanted to access master and tenant occupancies, that will you can still access those occupancies. It's just not going to indicate a master or tenant status in the app currently. All right, so that section name and locations all um, pulled from the info tab from the system. Contacts pulls directly from this tab. So we kind of combined two system tabs with a single panel here in the app. All the data corresponds point to point. It's just organized a little bit differently and we hope more intuitively. General info, again, all from down here, you can see the assigned inspector field correlates to this. And we've got assigned station. Whoops, right here. <laughs> okay, oh, and that's actually one more that I just caught. It's called station in the, in the web app and assign station here. That's actually a sixth field that's changed in its terminology. Again, functionally, it's the same, all right? We we're just trying to clean things up a little bit um, and make it more user-friendly. All right, so any questions at all on basic info? All right, so I wanna show you quickly if I make an edit here how it changes in the system. Okay, so this is assigned to the Broadway station. If you look on the left, I'm gonna change it to Deemer Road. I'm gonna click, or click, I'm gonna tap save. And I'm online, so it immediately synchronized. And so now I'm going to refresh the page on the web app. And it is now Deemer Road. So just by tapping save while you're online, sends the data to the server, updates it on the web-based. Um, if you refresh the page that, you know, if you're looking com to compare at the same time, refresh it and it's gonna change that, that data for you. And that works for every field on this page. The building, so I'm gonna go next here on the app, the building uh, panel is very specific to the structure and it's organized a little bit differently, okay? so. Um, it's organized um, by property use, and some of that comes from the basic info one. In fact, all of these come from basic info one. Construction and fire load is going to be coming from the pre-fire plans tab. So you'll notice that there is no pre-fire plan tab or panel here. It's integrated into the building. And so all of the construction related items here, instead of being kind of all over the place a little bit, here, they're kind of in a nice orderly fashion, top to bottom here. 
in the app. Utilities and critical locations, that is taking elements from both the pre-fire plans pit tab, okay? So the pre-fire plans tab is um, pulling electrical panel and then a couple of name changes here. The, um, and actually these two are on another page. So electrical panel, master key is called master key location with a period or abbreviation and it's called master key here in the app, okay? So just a few little changes there. Um, gas and LP shutoff, again, there's one that you know, for space we just, if you're putting that, we know that's the location, so we were just trying to streamline it. And again, there's probably gonna be areas we see where ah, we can rename that a little bit um, and just tidy it up some, but um, the data you put in this field directly, the gas LPG shutoff where my pointer's at is the same in, as it is in this field. Okay, now a couple fields, the fire alarm control panel or the fire alarm enunciator panel, going with NFP, uh, what NFP calls a lot of these things in the abbreviations, that's gonna be found here in the fire protection systems. Um, and that's gonna be listed under FD connections for FDC, whoops, excuse me, um, FD connections for FDC. And yeah, that's it on that one. Um, FD, FD connections is FDC in the app and the fire alarm control panel. Sorry guys, go back to the, is here fire alarm panel location corresponds to FACP and FAAP. So don't worry when they look a little bit different, the information you're putting in there will synchronize. Um, so Jack asks, can those fields be updated from the app while conducting an inspection? Um, well, what you have to do, and I wanna show you, you have to complete the inspection first, but certainly if some of that information you find is new or different, you can simply go back here into the build basic info, building or hazmat panels down here and make those changes while on the fly. And if you do it while you're offline, um, once you regain connectivity and synchronize, it will update the web base. So it can be done on and offline. So the answer is yes, but you gotta finish the inspection first or save the inspection where you're at, make the change and then go back to your inspection. And I'll show you that here momentarily. Great question. Okay, hazmat. Um, so hazmat corresponds to the chemical section. And so it is pulling in hazmat notes down here. So hazmat notes, looking on the right here on the web is this, is this uh, text box corresponds to this section here in the app and chemicals is the same as your chemical list here in the web-based um, system. One heads up you're gonna notice is that currently Cameo doesn't, we don't have a link directly to Cameo out of the app. That's coming up. So um, again, all that data that you put in about the chemical is going to be here. Access to Cameo, a quick access anyway to Cameo is still done here in the web-based app itself. Okay, so looking at those three panels, basic info, building, structure info, hazmat, chemical info, any questions on those? Okay, seeing none, let's go do an inspection. Oh, and before we leave this page, Again, I'm assuming too much here. Um, you need to know that when you're on any given panel in a section, on the right is a little uh, stylus icon, kind of like a pen or pencil. Over on the right, if you tap it, so right here, if you tap it, that's your edit button. That basically opens up a window to allow you to edit all any of, or all of those fields. All right, so if you're like me and you go tap the row and want to edit row by row, it's not going to do anything. Make sure you go over here to the uh, far right, tap on that, and then you're, feel, you're free to um, edit any of those apps. Pretty intuitive. Once you know that's where you go, then it's a breeze to enter it. And just be sure if you make any changes, tap save, and it sends that, it triggers it to the server, and you can see it takes just but a second to send it. And the difference here is on contacts. Instead of the edit, it's a plus because you want to add a new contact. If you need to edit an existing contact, you can just simply, now that is what I would think it should do. You tap on it and it opens it right up and you're good to go to edit the, uh, the contact info.
So any questions on either viewing or editing this data? Will hazards tab be available for departments with vision module? The answer is back here in the system, Greg, yes. You have vision, you get the hazards. In fact, this is where you do the OVAP score. That's where you do the OVAP scoring. So great question there. Okay, let's, let's do an inspection. All right, so when we do an inspection, because this building was assigned to me, all right, the inspection history and the next scheduled inspection, so scheduled inspections, completed inspections, all show here. That directly, and I'm gonna, it's too much to see by splitting the screen, so let me uh, spread this out. And this corresponds to this. Now there is one issue that we know of, and I'll explain that to you here momentarily. Um, so this is my list of uh, ins the inspection history, so completed inspections. That's this list here, okay? And next scheduled inspections are going to be listed here. And this 417 um, was an incomplete inspection. So, um, and it's also past due. Okay, so we know, right now we know that there's some scheduled inspections when they're completed in the app appear up here in the inspection history. So that's known and we're working on it. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and start a new inspection. So in order to start a new inspection, we tap on the plus here on the far right. So let's get move this off to the side and make this bigger. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and say we want to do, and, and again, you'll select the type of inspection you want to do, and let's say we want to do a facility inspection. Select it, then you pick your form, again, just like in the web app. So you've got your type, your inspection form, and because it's you that's logged in, it automatically assigns you to the inspection. Click Start Inspection goes into the actual form itself. Okay, so if you're if you're used to doing it web-based, uh, the form is the same. It just has a few little changes as far as its UI. All right, so here I'm going to go to Exits, and so for each each observation, so it's still your form. You select your observation, and you you can take up to three pictures per Violation. So we're going to take a quick picture. The first time you do it, InspectDR will ask you if, um, at least on uh, on iOS, it will ask you to access the camera. We'll tap OK. You can see my desk and keyboard. Take a picture. And it says retake or use photo. So we're going to use it. And then I've got the ability to do two more pictures in here and enter data here into the fields. Okay, so this is on exit doors, so panic hardware, not functioning. Okay, and then I work my way through the inspection. All right, and I can expand or collapse each section as I go. Only one section is going to open at a time, so when you finish on exits, you can go under your exit lighting, fire protection access, and equipment, and work your way through your form. All right, now if we need to go, and for example, like um, Jack mentioned, if I need to immediately go in, I can save and complete later, tap it, go back and make changes to my data points about the structure, come back to my inspection if I want to. All right, so let's say we finish the inspection. And that process, again, you guys, once you do it once, you'll know exactly how to do it. Select your violation, enter up to three images, type in your comments, go to result. Okay, result is, we're going to finish it now. Inspection results. 
Okay, we'll say it passed this time. Put in any notes. Inspector's name autofills. You can sign it. Apply signature. Enter the business representative's name, so your their point of contact at the scene, or at the scene, at the uh, inspection. You can tell I'm an operations guy. The email address. Business representative can sign as well. And then we go to complete inspection. I think I got all the basic. Yep. As long as you've got a sign, got all the uh, required fields, they will give you this prompt. Are you sure you want to complete the inspection? Yes, I do. And it's do, it's doing all the work, and the server does all the hef, heavy lifting. So that's why you'll see it spin for a little bit. It does all the heavy lifting. You've got your uh, noted observations here. And from the device, okay, you can view the PDF or email the inspection report. Before I do that, um, we've got some questions I want to answer. Um, is there a bulk operation function in the app for the observations? That is actually one of the two top priorities for the next release. So the ability to do um, bulk oper operations for inspection observations, Lisa, will be in, in probably the next release when you or when we say next release, let's do it. Not maybe not bug bug fixes and things like that, but the next major release um, will have that. Is that kind of the plan? I know you had mentioned that. We'll have continuous updates in the store, but I would say in the next uh, four weeks we should have that. Outstanding. And then the other big one is coming up here. I'm going to show you momentarily. Um, is the total photos three per violation or three total for the inspection? It is three per violation, not three per for the inspection. So up to three images per inspection observation. If pre-planned inspection performed in the app appear in, in the, ah, Joshua, good point. So um, if an inspection of any kind that's con performed through this, through the app, uh, will it populate into the daily log? We are looking into that. Um, I've tested it and it doesn't appear to auto populate in the daily log as if you were to complete it in the web-based version. But we're looking into why it it's not doing that, and that will be what would be considered a fix. Okay, next up, Mike. Why does the email not populate like it does in the web version? So the auto population based on the con because I because at the beginning of the uh, good point at the beginning of an inspection on the web-based system, um, it allows you to auto fill contacts and select uh, select contacts. So um, in this one. Um, in the app, this one, the app, it uh, doesn't allow you to select contacts. And so that's why it's prompting you to pick it at the end and it does not autofill. And that certainly can be something addressed in future future releases. And that kind of goes along with Corey's question, can it default to a contact? Um, and the app, not yet. Um, if you have, okay, so here's a question from uh, R. Myers. Um, if I have... If I have an ERS account, the fire marshal's office, building department, can I share it with the fire districts who have separate accounts and them with me? So here's the deal on that. Um, right now, occupancy um, information can only be, only forms can be shared amongst ER customers through agency friends within the administration module. So if you have a list, so as a fire marshal's office, you have a list of occupancies that span multiple jurisdictions and they have they are an ER customer and have some of those so each of those agencies have some of the same occupancies you have in your fire marshals account um, they're not going to be in the database thought of or seen as the same all right so um, you'd have to the way to go around that would be as if you had access to each of those agencies accounts and conducted your inspections in those accounts and then the data would be the same um, for both for that agency, although you'd have to log into multiple agencies that you would be uh, overseeing. So, um, however, you can share that information in this way. Um, you can grant them a login to your account to see that information, um, and vice versa. But 
even if they're in the same jurisdiction and they're another fire department and you have you each have your own emergency reporting account, the system will treat essentially say the same building um, in both accounts as different buildings because they're in different database tables. I hope that makes sense. Okay. If you had recorded an email address in the contacts tab for the business contact, would that have pre-filled um, when you completed the inspection? It might, Lisa. Um, I think for this occupancy, I don't know if I have any contacts. Auto. Um, actually, I think I do. Let's take a look. Let me just pull this over real quick, and then we'll. I'll show you on viewing um, an email in the inspection. So contacts. Right now, right now, there won't be any. It won't auto populate any of the email addresses. We're working on that. Outstanding, Stuart. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. So thank you, Stuart. So there you go. Okay, um, so that, Lisa, two more questions. Okay, Oliver, um, do you provide more bulk operations in the future, for example, um, the same contacts for selected occupancies or fire alarm system? Um, I think I understand the question, and I know the very first bulk operations um, within the app, and again, we're focused on the app today, um, the very first, in fact, it's, like I said, the top one, top one and two, um, changes to the app will be the bulk observation selections for inspection observations. So like in the app, you can go and select, okay, um, this exit was blocked and this exit light was out and you can, you can bulk change them to violation noted. Okay. And what is the reply to on the email screen for demo version? So Jack, can, uh, can inspection screen, go full screen on the tablet, it is very small um, on the demo version. And so if, all right, question one is, what is the reply to on the email screen um, for the demo version? Well, let's do the email and I'll, um, if, we're, if we're talking the web-based, um, we can go there, but I wanna focus here on the app here and wrap wrap this up. So you've, con you've conducted the, you've completed the inspection, okay? And so, if you're asking, can this go full screen, that is something Stuart may be able to answer. I know I've heard that comment before. If it can just kind of fill up more of the, the tablet's uh, screen real estate, and that probably will be something to address and discuss later. Um, I don't know if there's in, in, any um, immediate plans to change that. Do you know, Stuart? No, I mean, right now it's called a pop-up modal. Uh, we're we're going to try to make them a, a little bigger than you see right there on the screen, but it still resides inside of the other screen, so it won't ever be full screen, but it'll be as close as we can get it. Cool, thanks, thanks, Stuart. I hope those answer your, uh, your questions, everybody. Keep bringing them on as we, uh, as we keep going here. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna view the PDF report. And remember, it's gonna show the whole form um, for now until we can um, update it to select just certain observations. The heavy lifting is not done on the, the device, it's done on the server. So it reaches out to the server and creates a form just like it would if you were in the web-based app. And so you can see my violation, my notes, and the entire form appears here. I wanna close that. I could email it directly, just like from the system, I can click send email. It does the same thing as email inspection report. I can send it to, I can CC, all right? And then this reply too. So that is a great question. Um, so what this does is I'm sending it to me, for example, I can CC another person and the reply to, because this is coming from the system, it's gonna, it would show do not reply at emergencyreporting.com. And so if they hit reply on their email, um, once they get this, it, it won't go anywhere. This allows them to reply to you. So you could put your email address in here and this is a required field. Okay, so. Okay, and you can put in a little friendly message if you want to, and send the email. Click close, and your inspection's done. Here it is, May 20th, or April 20th, right here. Passed, and just so you know, we're working in the, I've got my account open here in the web app. We go to inspections, and we're gonna we need to refresh.
and there's my inspection 420 2017 the one I just completed these three up here just ignore for right now that's a known those are reinspects that populated up at top as opposed to down below but that uh, that everybody is how to navigate the new inspect ER occupancy app um, navigating the data elements editing the data elements and completing viewing and emailing in an inspection so what we'll do now let me move this off off the screen everything synchronized beautifully let me move this off the screen and I'll keep this up the actual app up and I do need to go to one more section here the settings section for right now I'll go there in just a minute we'll go ahead and open it up because it's pretty simple and can pictures be uploaded from the iPad instead of taken at the inspection Corey, I don't believe it can. However, in a worst case situation, if you have internet connectivity, you can do it through the um, through your browser in the web app on a device. Um, I don't believe, and again, let me, I'd have to go back and, and do an inspection. I don't know, well, let's just look. Yeah, so you cannot attach a picture during the inspection outside of the three buttons we give you for each observation. When we add the files tab where we can control images, then at that point that would probably be possible. Thanks, Stuart. I thought that was the case, so that's good. I always, when I'm not 100%, I just go back and check it. So, um, will the app accept dictation? I don't know, we could give it a try. I think it does. Um, um, if you have an engine company doing inspection and they have level two, how do the violations show on their tablet? Okay, so Scott, the engine company won't be able to do an inspection at all because with level two, they can only edit the data that will show here on these three panels, basic info, building, and hazmat. Those will be the only three panels available to them unless you have level three um, licenses that you've assigned to the person that's logged in. So by seeing this inspections panel and the ability to conduct an inspection indicates that one, my department has purchased level three, and two, I'm assigned to that level three privilege back in the administration module of the web-based system. So let's try the dictation. And then actually let's do this. I'm in the, what it, so it's gonna slide on over when you tap the gearbox or the gear in the upper right corner. And currently I have sync settings on when I can synchronize the interval. So this is when it will automatically synchronize. All right, in hours, okay? And it tells me my door, uh, device storage usage over total available, or yeah, total available, total number of occupancies in my account, and then I have one occupancy with inspections available for offline view, and that's the one assigned to me. Again, if I go check those boxes on the main grid, I could have more. Logout does exactly what it says. And about just gives you the version number and contact information. Okay, let's go in. Now I'm curious too on text field. So let's try it. Enable dictation. 301. Yep, it works. So, yeah, Scott, you can you can dictate. And again, I'm on an I'm on iOS, so it did it. And uh, so you can certainly dictate. And it's even nicer. Now, this is a text field, right? Just a single entry. You've got one observation notes. Instead of typing it all, you can narrate it. That's pretty cool. Good question. And. All right, we're, wow, that was perfect. We're at the uh, at the top of the hour. Uh, Stuart, I can't thank you enough for being here today and all the other team members from emergency reporting, um, uh, anyone from the office, um, be it marketing, uh, support, training, and then of course our sales reps that joined in today. Thank you guys. Um, does anybody else need any information? I was able to send you your, you've got some uh, links via the chat. I sent you that uh, minimum system requirements documentation. Um, so as you're specking out um, your devices to use the Inspect ER, and then you've got the link, of course, to contact your uh, 
your sales rep for more information. Yep, Scott, you're very welcome. Thank you for the thank you for the great question. I'm glad I was able to try out the dictation. I'm glad it works. It's kind of cool. All right, well, I'm going to stay here at least for a couple more minutes in case someone else comes up with some questions. Again, guys, I know you, your, your schedules are busy, so I can't thank you enough for uh, taking time today to uh, join in. Stuart, is there anything I missed or anything else you'd like to add about the app? Uh, no, but, I mean, again, this is not the end all of, of, of features. This is just us getting out to, uh, you know, getting something to market, and we will be adding uh, many more features over time. And we will be updating releases into the stores uh, pretty regularly. So uh, don't hesitate just to reach out through uh, support or whatever on feature requests. Uh, and we'll try to keep you posted as to what features are coming next. And we do have, okay, so not only will this video be posted, and I'm going to crank on crank this through and get it updated as, hopefully by the end of the day so you can watch this um, at your leisure in a recording. And we also have a few knowledge base articles here too to get you going. All right, so here you can do a search for Inspect ER or go over here to the right, click on Inspect ER app, and you're going to see four knowledge base articles that talks about what I talked about today on licensing, an introduction, a short introductory video, talks about the rename fields, and I discovered a couple more that aren't major renames, but we need to add that. And uh, then this kind of summarizes um, top to bottom the workflow and using the app itself. Um, and then soon though this this today's video will be loaded there as well. But we look forward to your feedback and uh, just remember it's inspect ER on your uh, uh, app store and then if you're iOS, it's in, when you do if you do a search for emergency reporting apps, download inspect ER, not the one that says occupancy. Other than that, um, I want to applaud Stuart and his um, his team. He was the product owner for this app. And he and his team um, put together something pretty pretty special here. And, uh, again, this is just the beginning, everybody, like Stuart said. So, again, thank you all. And uh, I wish you a great day. And uh, we'll see you again in the, in the first Thursday of, of, uh, of May.